Good evening, uh, all of one person watching me, whoever you are, out in the void. Uh, good evening. I can see that I am a mere one minute late to my own stream. I should probably hold myself to a better account, but it is what it is. So tonight, uh, we will be, I wonder if my mic volume is too low. I'm just going to turn that up and see how that goes. So tonight, we're going to be working on this. The RSI Scorpius. Now, I know how in the last stream, that was before Thanksgiving, before I got really sick and spent like two weeks recovering. I was working on the uh, Drake Buccaneer. But I had also kind of started this in the background. And the point behind this was that I, for a while, wanted to do what I'd like to call a master series. Um, I might be clipping a little bit. Uh, a master series ship, a ship that's a little bit bigger than anything I've done before and is also uh, better than anything I've done before um, in terms of fidelity, um, in terms of the experience of putting it together and um, just kind of make it the best it can possibly be, kind of uh, to show off what I've learned over years of doing models at this point five six years um, and so this kind of came about and the the ultimate idea is that it would eventually become a um, a centerpiece for my coffee table uh, <laughs> all things considered and uh, I've, I've actually there's been a number of ships on my mind for you know this this work I've actually I've actually done quite a bit of work on the Crusader Ares Ion, um, and that ship is actually quite far along. Um, I'm, I've actually finished the, the gun on it. Um, it's kind of a work of art to behold in, in all reality, but um, I will I will finish that one eventually. I want to finish it. Um, I've done a lot of work, and, and I would consider that ship a master series of mine. Um, it's got some weird geometry on it that that's kind of thrown me a bit for a loop. So I, um, I've been kind of uh, less enthused to work on it. Um, and even even this, even the the Scorpius has some kind of off paneling that I had to kind of kind of rectify. But um, in reality, it you know uh, this ship should come together quicker um it, it helps that the wings and these thruster pods are basically clones of each other um you know the, the bottom thrusters have this kind of landing gear bulge on them but in reality it's mostly just a, a copy of itself so you know that'll help the final product come together much quicker um once i can get through this main body right here um wings, once i can get get through this main body um, you know the rest of it should come together quite quite quickly um, but yeah so tonight um, I'm gonna continue working on the body here uh, and see see kind of how far I can get going um, I've been meaning to get into game and get some reference shots I've, I've noticed there are a few differences in the uh, what the actual artwork of the ship looks like in game uh, minor differences uh, and how this concept model um, came out. Um, like for example, this area on top of the, the cockpit here is definitely different in game um, than it is in the uh, 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 in in the concept model here. Um, I, I haven't really found a whole lot else. I mean, these these thrusters look like garbage in this model, and obviously they look a lot better in game. So. Uh, I'll be modeling my own uh, modeling my own thrusters here as you can see uh, just blank plates to, to kind of fill them in but yeah so here's where we're at um, working my way on the back and 
I think what I'm gonna work on right now is the top of this turret area. Um, as you can, I mean, as you can see, it's kind of, it's a bit noisy. Uh, I mean, just noisy with detail. And so, um, you know, I'll be coming through here and trying to d do my best to make this look the way it's supposed to, but simplify it um, of sorts. You know, like like one of the things that I um, that I had to deal with was uh, if you look at right here, these this this. I don't know, edging, if you will, that goes along the, the side of the ship um, is kind of this compound angle. It's got this flat top part and this, this flat here. And in reality, I could, I could do that um, out of wood, but one of the problems that you run into is that now I start getting into little pieces of wood that are just super untenable. They're, they're too small for you to realistically put together you know part of the part of the idea you know as 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 the artist here um, you know putting this model to get or your design of this model is I have to think about your experience putting this thing together and so um, and so when it comes to this I I decided on just a single piece at a kind of an average angle here to to represent that and I think you know you take the take the original model away and it looks good you know it it you know, looking at this model without any other reference, you'd never be able to tell a difference. You know, your, your eye gets, your, your mind gets the idea of what's supposed to be here. And so, um, and so yeah, so uh, just, just dealing with a bunch of that kind of stuff uh, as I work my way through the details. And uh, hopefully, you know, I'll be basically doing uh, all the exterior work on this model. Um, I've still got to come back and, like I said, the thrusters, and then I need to do the the missiles uh, here out of, um, I'm gonna have those be uh, 3D printed inserts uh, for the, the missile launchers. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of little 3D printed stuff like these vents here, uh, these vents down here, these vents back here. Uh, so that's all stuff I'm gonna have to come back and do later at some point. But right now my main focus is getting the wood paneling going um getting the wood paneling finished for the exterior of the main body because um, once i do that i can start working on uh the interior um, you know it's not to say that's not going to be a you know a difficult thing to do since uh, again I'm, i've been working on the quality of the experience of putting the model together and I've had a couple people put models together in the past that um, have essentially praised putting a model together and it feeling like you're putting the ship together as opposed to uh, putting something together in a way that's easiest to create the model. Um, you know, like if you put this ship together and, you, and, and this was like a cavity, you know, and it, and it felt like the inner structure of a ship the quality of putting that part of the ship together, gluing it together, feels better to the user. And so being mindful of, of that, that kind of interaction with, with the assembly of the model is something that I'm trying to keep in mind and trying to be cognizant of as I go through this and do this. So, um, so yeah, so as we come up here, um, one of the things I've kind of picked out is I need to make two flats. So. There's a flat that goes right here and comes back to about here. And then there's another flat that goes all the way down to the back of the ship. Um, and so, and what I might do is I might, I might actually extend this wall out. And actually, eh, yeah, I'm gonna extend this wall out to cover this area right here. Um, but basically create those two flats and then what I'm thinking is there's this one there's this one like area right here that's raised and I'm probably just gonna have to have I'm gonna have that as like a separate insert that just drops in so let's see if we can do this so um, it doesn't look like it's quite following that uh, we can get this we can get this panel in here no problem so we're going to create a plane and 
Let's see if we can't shove this plane in here. Now, one of the things, oh, that's, yeah, that's right. Okay, so we got a plane in here and we want it to fill in this void. Now, a big question is how far, okay, so this panel could essentially wrap around and fill in a lot of that void. I may just close these two panels up. I mean, yes, it's a, it's a, eh, well, we'll see. I'll leave the gap for now, um, but at least I'll come in and fill in this void here. As you can see, these panels kind of cross over. There's, there's this rail here that I'm going to want and this panel would fill in that rail so this panel is probably just going to go to right here so fill in this gap here um, and then for the rail itself I'm thinking I'm probably going to have this be so the base of this rail system is going to be one layer of wood deep so it would basically the, 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 the depth of the rail is going to be a piece of wood and then these, I don't know what you call them, rail components are probably all just going to be 3D printed uh, pieces that you just kind of slap on top of that piece of wood in the in the groove um, to make up some of this. Because obviously there's a there's a lot of detail here that I don't want to get lost, um, but there's a lot of detail here that's kind of small and would probably make for an un un, un uh, unexciting experience if you were to do it. Uh, out of pieces of wood. Um, the other thing to consider is that there is a turret up here and it's far enough forward and this is probably the position I'll have it in for the model. Um, but you know if, if I do like a 3D printed piece here um, I could probably build in you know a slot or something. Uh, let's see <laughs> what scale are you looking at this through? I mean, what are you referring to? Like, th so currently this this ship is, so cur the current scale of this ship will be, uh, I didn't, I haven't worked out exactly what it's supposed to be, but um, essentially the, the ass end here, so the, the little ass end here to the front of the ship here is about 14 inches, so, like I said, it's it's going to be one of the it's going to be slightly it's going to be bigger than the biggest model I've produced to date. Now, I mean I mean all my models have been relatively on the larger side. I mean that's kind of why I started this whole you know process of doing laser cut wood and 3D printing was so that I could make larger models that didn't take 400 hours of 3D printer time. Um, but yeah, so so like I like I had mentioned earlier, I, I kind of want I've, I've, I'm purposely making this a little bit larger so that it can be kind of a centerpiece, if you will. Um, uh, I already have uh, I already have somebody who's gonna build me, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a stand for it, and I'm thinking it's gonna be a big like carbon fiber swoosh, and then uh, the the base plate I'm gonna have uh, uh, have a shop machine. Um, I don't know, out of steel or aluminum or something that I can engrave. Uh, so yeah, something that just looks really cool. But um, the other thing to consider is that uh, I'm using my half thickness wood here. So um, no, the, the, the wood that I normally use for the big models is typically twice as thick. Um, I'm using the half thickness wood in order to get a little bit more detail out of this. Plus I just like working with it more. Um, it, it's not, uh, it, cu it cuts easier and uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, like I like I had mentioned earlier. I I started. I tried to start streaming some more uh, right before Christmas, or sorry, before Thanksgiving, and I got really sick over Thanksgiving to where it essentially ruined all of Thanksgiving for me. And so, I've kind of been on the recovery since, and really had been just low energy. But um, you know, this week's kind of been the first week where I'm like, ah. I feel like I can do stuff again, and uh, so yeah. So I'm op I'm open to stream more. Like, I, I, there's for me, it's a well. I can model in a vacuum, and it's really just me blaring music as loud as I want in my house. Uh, 
modeling, and I mean, don't get me wrong, it's cathartic and relaxing, but uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of people who've asked me over the years to see my process and see what I do, and I think that, um, you know, streaming is a good way of, of, of showing people kind of what it is that I go through and the challenges that I, that I run into and things that I do to overcome uh, kind of a lot of what it is to, to do this successfully. Um, you know, and, and I'm going to try to have, uh, have guests on. I, to be fair, this, this, this stream was kind of a, oh, I feel like it. So let's just do it kind of thing. But, um, I'll, I'll definitely, you know, have some, some star citizen minded people on in the future and, and chat star citizen -y stuff. Uh, when we, uh, when I do this, um, yeah, like I said, in the future. So, um, so yeah, well, 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 thanks for, thanks for welcoming me back. I, uh, I uh, definitely um, definitely like to be back. I'm I'm trying to kind of uh, get my footing with models again. I, I took my time off to do my own thing, if you will, um, as in like try to make my own uh, IP, if you will, and uh, it was really eye opening. Um, I have a lot of uh, uh, I have a lot of admiration for companies and individuals that can create their own series and, you know, uh, content, um, you know, and get people involved in it and enjoying it. Cause it, it does, it takes, it takes a lot of work and going through the motions myself, I, I realized that there is a lot that I, there's a lot for a single person to do. And so, you know, if I, if I ever try to try to do my own thing again in the future, I will approach it in a very different way. Um, uh, uh, obviously a way that I would think would be more successful, but, um, you know, something that definitely becomes a group effort as opposed to just me since, you know, I'm an engineer and I think like an engineer and I do things like an engineer, but when it comes to being successful on your own, you know, there's a lot of people that will say, you have to kind of have the complete package. You have to have somebody that's good at marketing and advertising and branding. And that's just really true if you want to do something on your own, because, you know, unlike doing Star Citizen models, there are, you know, which has an established brand and has people that already care about it and, you know, want to, want to digest whatever content they can get their hands on. And when you do something from scratch, you, you really do just, you're starting in the vacuum, you're starting in the void. Uh, and it's, it's, um, it's tough. It's, it's, it's hard to do. And so, um, I'm hoping that, you know, I can keep refining my skills doing some more Star Citizen ships. Uh, uh, Pyro, I don't know if you had saw, I've mentioned it a couple of times on my Twitter account that, um, uh, let's see, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm reading your message. Uh, hey, you know, thanks for that. I, uh, you know, I'm, 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 uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing just fine. Um, you know, I, I didn't mean to make it sound like sad or anything. It's just, it was, it's more of a, like, obviously as you, for, for a person like me, like I, I, I would love to get to a point where I'm doing something creatively that could become my income, you know, so, something that I've built of my own that I, I can own and say, ah, you know, that that's, that's my baby. And it's, it's a learning experience. It's just a constant learning experience. And, you know, I went through the steps and le learned a lot. And so I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying it was a, it was a failure. It just, I, I learned a lot. And I think that the next time I do it, I'll be way more prepared to, uh, to, 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 to give it a good go. Um, so, 
But uh, one thing I did want to mention is that um, I have taken the steps to reach out to CIG Legal. Um, in 2018, I pulled all of my publicly available files offline. And since then, I've had a infinite number of people who've come to me asking for build files. And um, my intention is that uh, if, and I, and I pulled them offline because CIG released kind of a, a creator EULA revision slash update. CIG claims that they didn't change anything. I, I'm not gonna go through the EULA with a fine tooth comb and vet it out, but regardless, back then I pulled all my files offline because I really didn't have the overhead to fight CIG if they were to come after me. I mean, I'm of a place that I, I think that what I am doing is fair use of sorts. I, I, again, don't don't quote me on that. I, it's I'm not using I mean, outside of the the name of the ship and the fact that it's Star Citizen and whatnot. Um, you know, I, I'm not directly using CIG's work. You know, it's everything I model is of my own. I do have their model in here, but it's, I'm just using it as, uh, like, it's a guide, you know? It, it allows me to make sure that my dimensions are being made to the, the dimensions that, you know, make the ship look, look appropriate. Um, and so I, I look at, I look at it as a, you know, I don't really see a problem with me wanting to do this work and then give my files away for free. You know, there's there's a community out there that has the ability and there have been a number of backers that have built my models in the past. Um, I wish I remembered his, uh, his name, it's, it's been years, but um, he was the only person I've ever seen that uh, built the my Glaive model and he did a, standout job on it and it looked amazing and he even built a custom like stand for it with a with a ball bearing in it so it, it spun around um i think that the stand is actually still on thingiverse for it um but uh you know and, and i, and I want to get and i recognize that i, I want to get back to a place where this work that i do can be shared with backers because i you know i'm <laughs> I'm never going to have a license with CIG to sell these. Like it, it's just, that's not going to happen. They, they have their partnership with JRDF. Um, and I'm not in a place to run a company that builds these models on mass. I'm just, I'm, I'm not, um, you know, for the star citizen community. Like, uh, obviously, if this was my own thing, yeah, I'd be doing, like, onesie twosie stuff here and there. But, uh, obviously, you know, if, if CIG, like, in, in the hypothetical world that CIG was to uh, put a post on, on, on their website saying, hey, we've just partnered with Rice Maiden to make these laser cut kits, I'm going to be flooded with orders. Like, uh, that's just, uh, the community is huge, and I'm never going to be able to be prepared for for that kind of an influx and so um and so I, I recognize that you know my my models here with cig unless i partner with someone or, or whatnot you know is probably never going to go beyond just me doing it for fun and sharing what i do with the community and so my point of going to CIG is to uh, get get permission from them to say, hey, like if, if I start sharing my models again, do you have a problem with this? Because I nothing knocks the wind out of your sails more than doing something, seeing a bunch of people really happy about it, and then getting slapped with a cease and desist from CIG saying we're we're not okay with you doing this. And uh, you know, as much as I feel like I have a place to as much as I feel like I, I may or may not have a leg to stand on it's 
I'm not at a place to fight CIG. Like, I'm I'm just here to kind of go with the flow and, you know, do things I enjoy, not involve myself in legal spats with... <laughs> Involve myself in legal spats with a game company. Like, that, that just sounds like a giant waste of my time. So, so yeah. So, you know, I uh, I hope I hope the response is positive. Um, I tried to leave it a bit open-ended in terms of a, like, is it a yes but kind of situation where, you know, you're okay with it, but I need to, like, sign something or, you know, like, like let's... Like let's 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 make this work um, in a way that you know we can both we can both be happy with. Um, so we'll we'll see we'll see. Um, you know I I don't know if when or if I'll ever get got back to. But uh, uh, you sent me three fully good models for Versecon. Uh, <laughs> I do I do I remember that. Um, you're talking about the VerseCon that was in what Texas? I want to say, because I did the uh, I did that was the uh, that was the three. God, those were the like first, second, and third place trophies that I did. I think like third was a Knox, second was a Razor, and uh, yeah, first was a Cartual. Um, I definitely remember those. Those were those were really cool trophies. I I thoroughly enjoyed doing those. Um, yeah, I, I always have to I always have to be uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I always have to get clarification on the cons because uh, that's what it was. It was Britison Con. Um, there was one year I think I think. I don't remember if it was before or after I did the model. I think it was before I did the model. Yeah, it was, it was the first time someone had asked me for models for, like, a tournament. And I did a, I did a Super Hornet for British and Con. And it was, like, the first time I had ever done a stand. And I had to ship it internationally. And it was a whole thing. Um, and it, 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 I'll be honest. It left a sour taste in my mouth because I had... The, the, the whole shtick was that the model was going to be the prize for first place in their dogfighting uh, uh, dog tournament. And uh, I, I ended up actually watching their live stream of the event, and it was really cool. And um, they, they ended up, like, I, I, I got contacted by the guy that won, and he's like, hey, could I pay you to make me a model? And I'm like but you were supposed to win the model that I sent. And as it turns out, the organizers kept the model and didn't, didn't give it to, you know, the winner. And I, I think I remember the next year they did it. They just had the model on display. And I'm like, that's that, that, you know, that should have been given to the winner. Cause, that, cause one of the things I, I said was like, look, I'll, you know, obviously they had to pay for shipping, but I, I sent them the model for free. I, it was my my cost of materials and my time and my labor. And I just said, just pay for shipping. And uh, they they, uh, they they kept the model. And, and the worst part was, is I was like, look, you know, I'll, I'll make you another model next year. Like, I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. And I, apparently they just wanted to keep that one, I guess. And so... Um, I felt really bad for the guy. I think I think I'm still friends with him on Twitter. The the guy that hit one, um, and it, you know, it was just a I don't know, it was just a sour situation. And so, but um, no, I, I remember I watched the I think I remember watching the VerseCon stream, and uh, yeah, that looked like a really fun event. I I, in all honesty, probably would have attended if I it was at this point in my life, <laughs> you know things get me from from traveling too much back then so yeah so is verse gone still going on is that do you guys still put that on every year or uh, i mean i guess i guess COVID has kind of made that whole situation a little a little weird um you know, 
I would uh, I would assume a lot of that stuff should be coming back. I mean, I really hope next year they do CIG to Citizen Con in the States. I, I hope they do it in, uh, in well, Austin or LA. It doesn't matter. I'll go to either of them. Because um, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I would love to go back. I mean, I, I went to the Citizen Con in Austin in 2018, and that was just a wonderful time. And I would gladly do it again. Um, and I hope that I hope that CIG does do that again, um, just because it's I mean, as a community event. Event, it's huge. I had I uh, I took a. I took a box of, uh, I took a, so we knew that the, the Drake Kraken was coming out and I took, uh, I, I made a box to hold six Dragonfly models and called it the Kraken and took it to Citizen Con and I had four that were given out to friends of mine and then two that were donated to Test Squadron as raffle prizes. And uh, that was a really fun event. I remember going through security and having to show them my my Kraken and open up each one of the dragonflies and go, see, look, it's a dragonfly. It's not anything malicious. <laughs> and then I got to walk around the con with this, this giant laser cut box of, of dragonflies. And uh, it was tons of fun. I still have that, uh, that box sitting around somewhere. I should probably set it up as a prop. But yeah, if I if I go to CitizenCon again, I'm gonna have to do something special like that. I would totally agree with that. CitizenCon is an amazing time. It 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 truly is an amazing time. Uh, you know, CIG definitely goes above and beyond to make it worth your while. And I mean, at least for me, like, I, as because because I was I still am part of Test Squadron. Like the Test Squadron meetup there in there in Texas was just an amazing time. Uh, someone had brewed like Star Citizen Test Squadron beer, and I remember tasting that. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, lots of like really really passionate people. And uh, yeah, and I think um, I think I think again if if CIG holds. Citizen Con, you know, whether it be at Austin or LA, um, uh, we should totally, or I will totally be going. Um, yeah, no, uh, I will, I will definitely reach out. I will, let's just say that, uh, during the last Citizen Con, um, I traveled with, uh, the, my, my girlfriend who coincidentally was the one that got me into Star Citizen. Um, and, uh, that was kind of a, a sore spot of the trip, uh, because our, our relationship, uh, basically ended like right as we got back from the trip. And, um, you know, uh, I would say that if, uh, she had not been there, I would have enjoyed, uh, my experience more. Um, you know, I, th I think that, I don't know, I think that, you know, whatever, the stuff that was going on, you know, for the fact that, I mean, both of us, or maybe just I wanted to be there. I don't know. I, I feel like it should have been put on pause, you know, so that this, I mean, possibly once in a lifetime experience could have been uh, more thoroughly enjoyed, but it, it is what it was. And uh, I think that, you know, uh, should I hopefully be in a, non uh non-committed position uh at that time i will definitely be reaching out to a lot of people so that at citizen con i can i can meet up with as many as many people as i know um as i can i know that uh, uh i'll definitely be probably trying to do some form of a uh, uh, uh concierge meetup uh you know there's a lot of real cool people that you know talk regularly in the concierge chat on spectrum and uh i think meeting a lot of them would be really cool i at, at the 2018 citizen con it was about four of us that, that got together and I have, a, I have a picture of all four of us together and uh 
Uh, it's probably one of my best memories from that from that event. Um, so I think that there's I think there's a lot that could be done, um, you know, next time. And you know, hopefully it's in Austin so I can have delicious barbecue and they can get back the amazing uh, food truck that was branded as uh, Big Benny's Noodles because it was a really good noodle food truck, uh, you know, regardless of them <laughs> temporarily branding themselves as a, as a fictional space noodle company. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, if you, you end up going to CitizenCon, if they hopefully have CitizenCon again, um, I, I think, I think Disco and Toast have both, both mentioned that, uh, you know, Citizen Con would, will definitely be happening again in the future at some point. Um, you know, I will be first in line to get my tickets. Uh, let's see. All right, so we got the base here. And all this is just going to be like 3D printed stuff. Now my... Now, one of the one of the cool things about this model is that this is going to be the first time that I do my 3D prints on my resin printer as opposed to my FDM printer. So, theoretically, I should get not theoretically the print detail will be higher and I can do finer detail. Um, however, as you can imagine, this strip here is probably eight inches long and definitely not going to fit on my FDM printer. So. We'll probably cut this into uh, a couple pieces. Yeah, you know, I I would expect it to be in LA as well. I think that was kind of before COVID hit, the next place that everyone was expecting it to be in. Um, I, to be fair, kind of hope it is in LA because I'll just drive down as opposed to trying to fly with models that are fragile. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, as you, as you can imagine, the... Um, as you can imagine, the uh, uh, whatever you want to call them, the flying with uh, flying with with flying carrying wooden models in a backpack going through TSA in 2018 is uh, is an experience, you know. And uh, thankfully, they don't really show up on the X-ray scanner, so you know TSA thinks I have just a couple boxes of air in my backpack. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, uh, well, you know, if I, if I don't have to fly, you know, save that money for the next capital ship, right? Right. That's what a good backer will do. <laughs> this time I'll also, uh, come up with gifts to give out that I don't wait until like two weeks beforehand to get figured out um because that was a thing last time i uh let's just say i i kind of waited until the last minute to make those dragonflies and uh get permission from cig to give them out and everything and it was a it was a whole fiasco um i uh, i definitely should have started that process like several months earlier but, but when that time comes, I will definitely be interested in looking at kind of what, uh, what I want to do for, for gifts for people, because um, I think that would be, be a really cool thing to do. So here's an interesting piece of geometry. I'm going from this angle here to these round things. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a vertical piece of wood, and then this whole piece right here maybe 3D printed. Um, I think this is a thruster. I think that's a thruster. I have no idea what that is. I'm gonna have. To, oh no no, it's the countermeasured launcher. Um, so I'll probably. Either that'll be, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to make a piece of wood that looks like this in all reality. So this whole piece will probably end up being 3D printed. Um, just this cap that fits in here um, on this piece. So 
So let's add this here and we'll start it. Uh, how are we gonna do this? Camera geometry. I kinda wanna start it right there. Let's add this here. Geometry and then slide this on over. Uh, I keep forgetting that the center of the screen is over here. I have to, I have to keep my, um, I, I have the window to the side, and so you know I keep like moving it towards the center of the screen, which is like right here, which is why it kind of looks awkward on uh, <laughs> on stream. So yeah, so, uh, hmm, that's an interesting idea. Do, yeah, you know what, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live with that. I'm gonna live with this choice. See how it, see how it plays out for me. Um, we'll make it big. Come on down. You know, actually, if I, um, Oh, that's a really good question. Um, now, you know what? I'll do the same thing down here. Because um, I think that would probably end up looking the best. Actually, this guy. Ah, oh, man, this is. This is an interesting piece of wood right here. Well, this is an interesting piece. It's small enough to where. It's you know you can imagine this piece of wood is going to exist right here, and so do I even do that? Do I even put a piece of wood there? Um, my other option is to make this entirely 3D printed. Uh, I don't know. Do I? Uh, okay, so let's say I come over here. I mean, I'm going to run into a similar problem with this. I'm going to have to come up with a way to... I mean, these could these could just be end up end up just being stacks. Um, yeah, you know what? I guess I'll just end up doing stacks for this because... Oh, yeah, I could just do thick wood stacks and that'll, that'll take it up. That'll take it up pretty quick. So yeah, so I'll do I'll do the thin stack here. So let's get rid of the view. Oops, don't want the wings. Okay, so as you can imagine, um, this is purely vertical. And the edge of this piece of wood. Okay, so let's, um, I guess you're on the edge there. So just on the edge. And we'll bring this back just a little ways, just to. Fill in the void, because again, I'm going to have to come back in and figure out the interior of the ship, like, all at the end. Um, you know, and that's and that's going to be another 11 jillion hours of modeling, because, I mean, in reality, the interior sometimes takes more time than the exterior, just under the guise that, like, you know, the exterior is really... You know, making it look appropriate and making it look good. The interior is trying to figure out how the hell you actually get it together. Um, you know, because I mean, I, I, you know, there's <laughs> if, if you ever see if you ever see the Prowler, uh, what you know, what made up my Prowler model. That was a uh, the fact that it went together as well as it did was 
basically all on hopes and prayers. Um, there was very little skeleton inside of that model, and you essentially had to be a master, a master gluer uh, to get to get that thing to actually be appropriate, um, go together appropriately. Like I, I know where what piece I had to use to take up the, the slight difference I had side to side in that model, but as I said, it's it's kind of amazing that that model didn't didn't require more uh, uh, more work to get together. Did that, does that actually line up? That might actually just perfectly line up with that piece. I'm kind of not convinced but we'll see if that 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 polyline actually closes um, when i'm done all right so we have our piece and let's pull this out wow that actually filled in i'm quite impressed okay so we got the we got the butt piece if you will um, and then on top of it we're gonna probably most definitely go with like a 3d printed piece so it'll have this curvature in it and it'll probably start up here i'll probably exaggerate it so that it fills in a bit more of the void um and it'll also have the countermeasure launcher in it um although it looks like i'm probably going to have to cut a hole in this in this wood piece to make room for it um but that'll that'll look that'll look pretty good here on the the ass end so okay um, I wonder if, what are the chances that this is symmetric here? Like, I'm genuinely curious, because if this is symmetric and I can start with this angle here, that's going to make my life a lot easier. So we're going to find out how symmetric this model is. Nope. Nope, it is not symmetric. Sad day. Okay, so I guess we will just uh, we'll just start from scratch. And if I remember properly how to do this. Oh yeah, you can see here that that yeah, I should have been able to tell by this this tail right here that the geometry wasn't wasn't the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create So I'm hugging this this ridge right here, but I need, you know, maybe we're just gonna maybe we're just gonna kind of we're gonna kind of guess we're gonna guess that if if I'm thinking it's gonna be about this high, uh, that might be good enough. Uh, that might not be good enough. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. So let's see. We start here. We start there, and then come in. Follow this ge body geometry, and yeah, it's gonna be our piece. Um, how far are you? Okay. Cool. So I'm just gonna follow it explicitly and see kind of what. There. Uh, come over, follow this all the way down to here. Um, yeah, that should be acceptable. And I remember I, this didn't go all the way out. This was kind of partial. Go all the way out and we'll bring it on in if it needs to be corrected. Yeah, it looks like that might be acceptable. Um, all right. All right, 
So now if we, yep, that looks like that's got the same amount of same amount of poke on this side. So I think we should be good there. So if we hide the body, basically round that corner. Yeah, basically around that corner and fix this pretty easily. This tail out of here, so this can be down so that oops don't want to run into that so bring this piece down so that it's not clipping through there and boom another fixed piece and let's just tuck that in a little bit more and bam per perfect intersection so continuing down this kind of facade so this edge disappears so this will probably be our last piece along this rail um, so this should be relatively straightforward. So you're terminating up here somewhere, so we'll just do that. And then we'll follow this body line up. This body line all the way up and Good. Um, actually, there is kind of this. Yeah, but yeah, I should probably honor the gap. Uh, we'll honor the gap. That sounds wrong. Uh, good enough. So, apologies for the, the chaotic. Uh, camera work I, uh, I suffer from uh, a problem that many many engineers have and that is uh, we're just chaotic with the camera controls um, because it's how we how we model um, and as you can imagine that uh, that's not a good uh, trait for designer views when you're showing people uh, your, your work for review and nobody can see what the hell's going on because you you're basically saturating the team's call uh, with just chaotic mouse movements. All right, cool. Sweet, we have rounded the corner. Uh, what the heck? I mistyped a I mistyped a value here. Some. Try that again. I probably did not put in a decimal. There we go. Now the part isn't infinitely long. Let's correct those edges. go we're starting to get a back end of this thing going you know one of the one of the things that I've uh, I've had people ask me about and I've I've never done and that is building a model modularly like like for example you know if you look at this thing it's I mean there's like a body and there's a turret and there's thruster pods and wings and I've never done it. I've never built a model in parts. Like I've, I've never been like, oh, okay, I'm done with the body. Let me go build the body, and then then go, okay, I'll design the thrusters and build those and attach them. I've always built the models as a like I've gotten everything done before I start start building it. Um, and I, I don't know why that is. I I mean, probably the fact that 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 I would probably. Uh, like 
have a heart attack from the anticipation. Um, you know, getting the whole model done basically is like, well, I know where my weekend's going. I'm just going to be sitting at the laser cutter and the, the router making parts. And uh, I think that's that's a little bit a little bit healthier for me than uh, <laughs> than putting this together and being like, cool. I can't really show this off because it's not the full full model. This turret's gonna be fun. I'm gonna have to. I'm thinking for simplicity's sake, I'm probably going to do a full set of Panthers on here, unless I get unless I get real special and pull in my own weapon models for you know whatever whatever I want to load this thing out with. Because um, in reality, these are Panthers, and I think these are Badgers. Um, Although this model might all be the same. Actually, I think this model has them all as Panthers. So there is no perspective in this camera mode, which means that what you see in the foreground is the same size as what's in the background. So yeah, those are, they're definitely all Panthers on here. Oh, that, yeah, that makes sense because there's no, there's no gimbal here either. Okay, well that makes things easy. I'm, I'm just basically gonna do all Panthers on this, just so I have to model this this panther once and then copy it seven more times. I uh, I definitely don't don't want to uh, <laughs> I don't want to uh, you know be in the business of making like 30 different gun models because as you can imagine this will entirely be 3D printed um, and I typically design weapons so that they can be printed without support and so. There's a lot of consideration that goes into how this geometry ends up looking so that, like I said, no, no support material needs to be used. Um, going to the resin printer is nice because it, it makes this a little bit easier um, since the, the resin printer can print 90 degree overhangs without support. Uh, but, but we'll see. Um, I'm hoping these look really good because these will you know, obviously be a standout part of the, the ship uh, when it's done. Um, what else? I was about to say something and then I just completely lost my train of thought. Um, what else is... I, I don't... God, I had something I had something to talk about and I completely, completely lost it now. Um, let's see, is there anything else on here? Oh, yeah! Um... When I started this, I had a lot of mental discussion about whether or not I wanted the model to have the wings fold. Um, and I'm kind of on the train of, of no. Uh, just under the guise that the wings in the actual model are double hinged. So they, they, they can rotate on this right here as well as up here. Um, and that's, I mean... It's not geometry that's like foreign to me or anything, but doing it in this scale in a way that's going to be reliable and cheap to manufacture is kind of difficult. Um, and so, and in reality, like the only reason you would fold the wings on this model is for what storage? Like, if I'm not adding landing gear, then nobody's going to display this with the wings folded in. Um, and so I think that uh, I think that for me, um, doing this static is probably just going to be the best. It's going to make it the strongest and whatnot. Although I'll probably it'll probably I'll probably make a way for the wings to attach that they can come off um, because obviously that would solve the, the storage storage issue um, as well as uh, I mean so yes technically it's triple hinged. I was just thinking more of like this action right here, you know, obviously, obviously the wings are hinged here, but just the action of, uh, the, the wings doing their little like collapse thing, their, their little X wing collapse, um, being double hinged, uh, you know, cause, cause I, I'm assuming what it is, is, I mean, despite the fact that this is running into here, I'm assuming that this actually hinges 
back, right? And so it hinges into the body right here um, because what it's gonna do is it's going, and then this hinges forward because it's gonna create a bigger gap between these so that when, when this hinges down, you don't get these like wing pucks running into each other. That's what I'm assuming is is is, is happening. I, I like, like I said, I've been meaning to get into sim and take some photos and video of it actually doing its thing and figure out exactly what's going on. Um, in reality, I think what'll ultimately end up happening is just doing a really nice like static interpretation of this 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 you know RAM linkage geometry here. And not not worrying about trying to make it move and whatnot is probably going to be for the best. I mean, again, I'm adding complexity for something that you know, as a display model, doesn't really need that complexity. So, yeah, no, I I really look forward to this. My my hope is that I can get this done this month. Um, you know, as you can see talking and modeling doesn't doesn't get me very far but um you know as as i go along and i get get more comfortable with the geometry of the ship things will start falling in place faster um you know once i you know because because like the ass end of this i i had to sit and think about it and you know now that i kind of know how i'm going to tackle this this will probably come together pretty pretty quickly and easily um and so uh so yeah so i will uh i'm gonna i'm gonna keep plugging away at this thing this month and uh, hopefully get it done so that um, you know we start off 2020 2023 with a, with a, with a shiny new uh, coffee table uh, centerpiece if you will and uh, uh, you know this will be the first star citizenship I, I will have ever done that's gonna have carbon fiber elements on it um, some of my my personal ships that I've designed uh, have done I've done carbon fiber on and it's it's looked and turned out really good um and i think it i think it'll work really well for this um i'm thinking of doing the wings so this this front portion of the wing out of carbon fiber and then the the raised elements on the upper and lower portion back here uh out of wood uh kind of it, it has a really nice like contrast to it you know you get the dark carbon fiber and then the, the like brighter wood um, and I think it's really going to make this make this model pop. Um, if I can find a way to put carbon fiber elements into the body here, I will. But I'm just I'm not I'm not seeing much of it at this point. Um, you know, maybe I don't know, maybe these like trailer things can be carbon fiber or something. Uh, who knows? You know, it'll fall into place as it goes 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 together. And definitely as I get closer to the end, I'll be able to kind of have a little bit more freedom to say okay i know what this geometry looks like now i can start playing around with the, the what ifs so well cool well uh pyro thank you for thank you for hanging out with me um you know i really am only going to probably be streaming for between an hour and an hour and a half uh these these just Next few times I stream, um, you know, when I have guests, I end up going a bit longer just from the standpoint of uh, uh, I get to talking and chatting with people and, you know, things end up going longer than, than I intend. But, you know, I'm definitely not the uh, I'm not the the eight hour subathon streamer here on Twitch. I'm just uh, I'm just a guy who likes to, to, to model. So. Thanks for hanging out with me again, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make this a I'm gonna try to make this a regular thing. So uh, um, I might I might try to to nail down some form of a schedule here in the next couple days, and I'll I'll post it on Twitter and maybe hopefully update my Twitch page to to indicate it. But uh, yeah, um, let's see what you say. As a universe that is trying to be as realistic as possible, I think having a community member check them would be very beneficial. Check. Are you talking about checking the models? <laughs> are you gonna be? Uh, are you gonna be QA? Send you send you a bunch of models to, to test out. I mean, I mean, in, in 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 all fairness, I do I do have a friend of mine that has quite a number of my models and just because he's been kind of the the QA person for me 
Um, he gives really good feedback, and he's he's an experienced modeler. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm not opposed to uh, uh, sharing the love, if you will, but obviously, uh, you know, I I do believe that there is, you know, a point in which CIG probably gets involved. I because. Again, I've talked to CAG in the past about giving models out to people for free, you know, entirely at a loss of my own time and money. And uh, the couple times I did that on a larger scale, I had to sign uh, a license agreement with CIG. So, you know, it's, it's very much something that I'm, you know, trying to be trying to be nice about you know trying to make sure that i'm not stepping on any toes and i think that especially now that cig has their their agreement with grdf and grdf is doing ship models that uh you know i need to tread lightly uh as to not get on some bad side of that relationship because i mean uh, you know Nobody can make nobody can make an argument that I am even remotely profiting off of anything I've done. I've spent hundreds of dollars and hundreds of hours of my time doing this for literally no return. And I do it because it's fun and I enjoy the game and the universe. And, you know, that's all that matters to me at the end of the day. So, well, thank you, Pyro, once again. And, uh, yeah, until next time, uh maybe maybe next time i'll you know i'll probably work on this a little bit offline and it'll be a little bit further along next time but this will definitely be the uh be the focus of attention for the next couple of streams and uh maybe once i get it all done i'll do a i'll do probably a pretty long stream putting it together because this is definitely not going to be a like one hour assembly it's probably going to be like a maybe like a three or four hour assembly kind of kind of job <laughs> definitely definitely i mean i i know of several cig members that have uh been recipients of, of my models in the past so uh you know i i do find it a little funny you know not to not to extend my stream even further but uh i sent a gladius I believe it was a gladius to uh one of the moderation staff at the austin office and they opened it and and they they thought it was like a gift for the office and <laughs> i he, he he was he was telling me that he's like it then he's like oh that this this thing came from you and i was like I know, but that was for you. <laughs> and so, like, they had already set it up in the office or, or something to display it. And I was like, no, go take it. It's yours. <laughs> and so, as far as I know, he, he he still has it and has it at his house or whatnot and displaying it. So, um, you know, I, uh, I'm i definitely not opposed to uh, sending people I know at CIG uh, models. Um <laughs> well hey you know you, you get on you get on the uh the, the the nice list for the year and maybe maybe come maybe come december or december 25th and santa santa will bring a nice uh nice model kit down the ch <laughs> chimney for you <laughs> i you know again i i i would love to be able to build models and like send them to people just just willy-nilly you know people that enjoy my work because again i mean it's like uh, it's not like i have hundreds of thousands of people that are like clamoring for my models and so like being able to let people who've been fans for a long time experience you know what it is i make is great but legal hoops and hurdles just at the end of the day is always just a pain so you know I'm doing my best over here to see see what I can do and see see you know how much CIG is going to really give me a hard time and the best I can do. So 
Well, for the, the millionth time, Pyro, thank you again for hanging out with me. And, uh, yeah, I will, uh, like I said, I'll update Twitter, um, my Twitter accounts. It's, it's at Rice Maiden, but it's Rice underscore Maiden because someone else had previously taken the non underscored name already. Um, I'll probably try to post a schedule uh, as well as uh, some updates of when I'll be streaming again. And, uh, yeah, go from there. So thank you, and uh, until next time. <laughs>